Now, can you see in all of that that obviously as has already been pointed out, a lot of what I was stating was about the feminine side of God, wasn't it? And so, uh, so part of part of that, the question has to be asked: Well, why is there all this injuries on the feminine side, but no, it doesn't seem to be aimed towards the masculine side so much? And so, this is where the next step comes in very handy. And the next step is for you to focus on how you feel, firstly, about the same sex as yourself, right? and how you feel from the opposite sex to yourself. Now, what I've done there is I've, I've gotten all of my life and all of my law of attractions and I've put them together into one sheet. So, for example, in the first century, I'll give you some events that happened to me in the first century. When I was uh, about 21, um, there was this girl who, who my parents felt should marry me and her parents felt she should marry me too and she wanted to marry me as well she had what you would suppose you'd call today a crush on me and and so she wanted to marry me as well and I kept refusing so I kept refusing the um, approaches of her parents and I also kept refusing her approaches she came to believe that if she, um, if she could get me into bed and have sex with me and get pregnant, that I would actually then marry her. And so she came around one evening when nobody else was home and, uh, and she tried to get me to go to bed with her. And I refused. Um, and I thought that was the end of it um, myself. But she went home and she had four brothers and a father. Um, and she went home and told them that I'd raped her. And what happened was the next day, they caught me and begun a beating of me. Um, they used red hot spears that they'd heated in a fire and they stabbed me through the legs and, and the body pinning me to the ground so that the blood wouldn't flow out and then they'd kick, they'd kick all of my groin area into smithereens basically and they broke both of my legs and my arms and then towed me around behind a horse through the middle of the streets in the town naked and um, they, uh, they then um, allowed their dogs to eat my face and and um, they allowed all of these, um, they broke my back and, and then just as a, like I was feeling that I was going to die, the girl sent her mother to tell them that it was all a lie. So, um, so a lot of my feelings towards women are like that a, just one lie from a woman can kill you, you know. And, uh, and so I've got, so, so the feelings from that event, what happened afterwards was that I couldn't walk, and I, obviously, I <coughs> and I couldn't um, look after myself at all, and my mother looked after me uh, for some time, but it took nearly three weeks before I became conscious. And <coughs> the first thing I seen when I became conscious is this girl came to visit, and um, she visited me and then saw what she had done, really. And the next day, I woke up in bed and she, she was hung herself on the rafter in my room. And I couldn't take her down because I couldn't move. So she just hung there for quite a few hours until one of the family came in and, um, and took her down. And like even in death, she tried to make me responsible for what happened, you know. And so, so it took me, um, it took me nearly two years before I could walk, and I was fairly disfigured and was was classified, I suppose, as a cripple. And then I spent another three years living in a cave because I felt I couldn't live at home anymore because my 
my father actually felt that their actions were justified. Um, so I had a lot of emotions to work through about my dad as well, and, and my mum didn't speak up as well, and so I left home. That was when I left home. And I, I left home and lived in the hills, in, the, in a cave in the hills. And a friend of mine who was a, the master of the synagogue in Nazareth brought me food. Uh, two or three times a week until I could look after myself properly. Obviously, in time I healed all of those injuries. Um, and, and once I healed those injuries, um, it, it looked like that never even happened. Because, uh, you know, with divine love and once you get into a certain condition, um, you can heal all of those things. But can you see how, like, just one act of, just one life, and so I became really, in this life I've become really afraid of a woman's anger. So afraid that I'll almost do anything to avoid it. And it's been really hard for me in all of my relationships. I've done everything I possibly can just to avoid their anger. So much so that in my first relationship that I had, which was, my, which was a marriage, um, for 14 years we, were never, we never had an argument because uh, she had nothing to argue about, because I just couldn't allow myself to even contemplate her anger. So that is added into this expression that I'm going to read in a minute about women. In the first century, uh, my mum followed me around a fair bit. Um, initially, she followed me around to protect me, because she felt I was nuts, and that if everyone knew I was nuts, they wouldn't kill me. So she felt that um, if she followed me around saying, after I'd been talking, that, uh, that I'm nuts, that, that people would um, you know, accept that I'm nuts and then obviously they wouldn't uh, try to attack me. And, uh, and so that, my, mo my mother's emotions in the first century are added into this. My mother's emotions now are added into this statement as well. And all of my relationships that I've experienced there's been four relationships I've experienced have added into this, into this expression that I'm going to read about women. Now understand that these are the, I know these are the capping emotions, right? These are the capping things. These are not the real things, but these are just how I feel about women. And many of them I've already dealt with. So many of these feelings I'm going to read out I've already dealt with. But I'm just trying to illustrate to you the importance of being really truthful and honest about everything that you feel. Right, so let's go into that, which is over the page. So what I've done is I've added all of those women together and created a one she. And then I've just expressed how I feel about this one person. Does that make sense? She is condescending towards me. She cannot see any good qualities in me. She is blind to seeing me is self-absorbed and selfish and does not care who she screws, is disillusioned with love, does not have a personal integrity, is not honest with herself, is willing, unwilling to forgive and blind to her own faults. She's superficial, has a fucked up desire for men who she can control and mother, talks about commitment but does not know its meaning. She wants security at all costs, does not want to take risks, does not want a deep love, treats me like a piece of shit unworthy for her love and attention. She uses sex for her own selfishness, is callous about sex, wants to control me with sex, wants to control me totally, wants to hurt me, rejects love, rejects me, lies to me, withholds the truth from me, has no courage, wants to put me down all the time, does not want to love me, is callous about love, is willing to harm me rather than deal with her own emotions. She treats me as if I'm un of worthless, treats me as if I'm beneath her. She treats me unjustly, treats me like I'm an abusive man, belittles me, does not find me attractive, does not give of herself, only gives to me if she can control me, and is not freely expressive of passion or love. She's afraid of sex. She expects me to do for her what she refuses to do for me. She wants to keep her distance, wants to be not vulnerable, is ashamed of me, is ashamed of herself when she's with me, tries her best to hurt me rather than feel her own hurt. She is blind to her own faults but wants to pick on minor issues with me. She is willing to use her body to get what she wants. She has sex without her heart being involved. She uses me for sex but desires someone else. She hates me, hates my body, hates who I am, is callous and indifferent towards any pain and suffering she causes, 
and she's not sorry for anything she has done. She feels I am not big enough, handsome enough, good enough, sexy enough, masculine enough, attractive enough or intelligent enough for her. She hates me being Jesus and is ashamed of my identity. So that's my stuff. That's the start of my stuff, I should say. All right. Now what I try to do after experiencing all of that, just all those feelings, is like I went just again into that rage feeling of like really feeling and connecting with the rage about all of that. Do you know what I mean? And again, out come the gloves and the thing, and, I, and this is something I've been working through a lot lately, is just connecting to the rage completely. So it's all, it's all connected? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I suppose it's expected, considering my law of attraction. <laughs> and I, I feel there's a lot of different feelings I have too, by the way. These are not the only feelings I have towards women. Um, these are more feelings that I have towards a personal partner or a mother figure. So you can see how many of these are related to my feelings about God. Can you see that? There's a big linkage between these feelings and my feelings towards God on the feminine side. So um, I, I have a lot of love for women too, and also a lot of respect for how women can process emotions and so forth. And obviously most of you women, you wouldn't be here unless you felt quite a lot of love coming from me already, right? Mm -hmm. So this is about me dealing with the things that are still blocking me. I'm just wondering, is it, is, it's keeping it in your face, so to speak, until you deal with yeah, I've also though had like big laws of attraction about it. Uh, for example, when I organised the Mulaney uh, one day stuff that people came to, um, I organised about 80 people, about 30 of them were men, and yet I got 20, 20 complaints from women, right? but no complaints from men, for example. So there's my law of attraction at work, right? And so it's all there just focused on how women are always upset with me, how they always put me down, always condescending towards me. Many of you have felt condescension towards me at times and, and not even known it. And I've felt it. Um, and many of you have actually felt even emotions of like, when I'm going through an emotion or feeling some kind of emotion, you go, oh, poor dear, like, you know what I mean? That's not the kind of, that, that is a condescending emotion, like a mothering emotion. And I'm not looking for that, obviously. Um, but that's the kind of emotions you feel like you're expressing at times. So I feel all of those things, and yes, it's been really good for me to, to access my law of attraction. And it's also been good because a lot of the women who have been a bit closer to me have been extremely angry with me, like really extremely angry. So much so that many of them now ha won't even speak to me uh, because they're so angry with me even now. Yeah, so that's my law of attraction too. You must understand, again, this all gets back to the reincarnation questions, really. Uh, reincarnation, and I've said this quite a number of times before, and my suggestion, again, is to read the reincarnation and divine love thing that I've written. But all of, the, all of my 2,000 years of experiences are now filtered through my mother and father's emotions of this life. So every single memory that I've had, it's like having a memory again, it's having the event happen again, but this time with the emotional signature of my parents. But how did you attract it in the first life? Uh, I mean, all of these events? No, that, Laura, but that, yeah, that particular event. I've got no idea at the moment, because I haven't because I'm processing the events, so I don't know how I attracted them, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I can, I'll only know how I attracted them after I've processed myself through these. <coughs> and my feelings at the moment are that there, are a lot of, there was a lot of untruth in the world I was living in then, and, and I was in a state, a fairly good state of truth, but, but truth, truth and error obviously are often in very, very great conflict with each other. And so the more in truth you were in the first century, the more you got hurt. Is yeah. there any difference today? <laughs> um, no, I think there is more acceptance of truth today than back then. Back then, you know, you just had to say something and you'd be killed for it. Nowadays, they might feel like, see you later, they might feel like killing you for it, but uh, they won't because there's a law. 
back then, you know, most of the laws weren't weren't were worried about following through too much. So. Yeah, but if they're doing it just because there's a law, there's still no acceptance of truth, is there? No, but there's more, there's less projection of it in terms of less personal damage. Yeah. yeah. But I also feel there's less projection too. Like, uh, there's a lot more people today who are willing or wanting truth in their life mm -hmm. than there were in the first century. Yeah. Yeah. But, I wondered what happened to the um, young lady that hung herself. Well, I, I've been feeling about her quite a lot lately, and um, just I have a feeling. Um, I, I really, up until now, believed that she was actually a celestial spirit uh, that had worked through her issues, but. I have some feelings lately that she may not have, and uh, and so I'll work through that when I when I work through this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Let's go into the anger I feel. This is what. Imagine me beating the hell out of and kicking the hell out of something here, and just raging. Right. I am bitter and caustic. I feel like raging and swearing at her. I'm so angry I can't get any words out. I'm outraged at the injustice she does not see herself creating and I feel contempt for her. She is despicable and unworthy of any of my attention. She deserves my scorn. I want to make her feel what I feel when I hurt. I feel like rebelling against her, no matter what her motives. She deserves to be punished, and I want to punish her. I want revenge. I feel injured and damaged and wrongly used, maltreated, and I want to yell and swear at her about that. I want to make her life as painful as she has made mine, and I do not want to be patient with her. I don't want to forgive. I just want to look as I want her to look as ugly as I feel inside, so she is disgusted with herself and what she has done, and then I'll feel. But then I feel bad about that desire when all I really want is for her to be sorry, and about how she feels and acts towards me. She wants to change who I am and can never accept me as Jesus. So I've just beaten the hell out of <laughs> the, uh, the 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 uh, boxing bag and yeah, like. I generally beat it at as much as my knuckles can handle, and then, then I get out the baseball bat and have another go. Um, I tried doing it with an axe and a few other things, right? But, um, but it got a bit dangerous, so I just had to do it. Do we all have the same intensity of feelings locked away inside of us? As dark, as dark I, I can feel these really dark emotions inside of the majority of you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the issue is, well, a lot of times we're just trying to shut it down, trying to shut it down, because they feel so ugly that we've got so much self-judgment, right? They feel so ugly inside of us that we don't want to experience them. Yeah. Hey, Shay, I know you said you want to all together with each of your uh, experiences. Yep. Do we need to, yeah, as it comes to us, think about each individual um, person, event, and do that, or would it you can do. Just add to it. You can think about each individual person and event. Yeah, yeah, you can do. Or do it this way. Or, or you can lump it all together. It's just an expression of what you feel. In this case, in my case, it's an expression of what I feel towards the feminine. Do you follow me? Now, I've also skipped over the thing about that I've felt with my dad. So you can see it's much less. Uh, it's uh, halfway down the page is the, is the things about my father and how men have treated me and it's much less so most of my injuries have been to do with the feminine yeah. and I'm still working through many of them so let's look at getting into the grief now so so I've now experienced the anger you imagine me kicking and punching away and then as I connect and kick and punch away I start really grieving right really grieving like just falling over on the ground and curling up in a ball and just sobbing, right? And these are the kind of feelings that I had. I feel sad, afraid I will never be happy, cold inside and without hope. I feel like I am nothing as a man, without value to a woman. I feel ugly and small, a piece of shit to be wiped out of my woman's life. I feel unnoticed, unheard, unwanted, abandoned and rejected. <coughs> I feel empty and alone. I'm not attractive to my lady, not sexy enough for her to desire me. I'm only good enough to be used. I'm ashamed of myself and powerless as a man. I'm unworthy to be who I am. I'm so sad that I cannot change who I am and be someone else who is more acceptable to everyone. No one accepts me. Everyone wants to be someone else other than Jesus. I feel tormented, abused, despondent, discouraged, hopeless and wretched. There's some of my feelings of grief. 
with women in particular. How are we feeling? <coughs> Is that feeling heavy? Yes. Who wants to stop? No. <laughs> but can you see how like, there's all these heavy emotions inside of us, right? And just me even mentioning some of my heavy emotions, what does that do with you? Ooh. Connects you with some of your heavy emotions too, doesn't it? Yeah. And then, and what, what, do we, what, what do we do? Well, a lot of times we try and skip over that. Oh, let's have a positive message. Let's go and have a drink. Let's go down a pub and have a few beers. You know what I mean? We do whatever we can to get away from all of this. And you can understand why, can't you? Because it's really hard to allow yourself to get into it. So, so when you pass into the spirit world, you've got, to, you've got to do it all anyway. All of this work has to be done, whether now or later. Might as well do it now, you'd be happier. Yeah. 